So you've outfitted your rig with the highest end components your bank account can handle and you're pushing out more frames than an art gallery. But it looks like your system could use a little bit more pop and that's when it hits you. A custom water cooling loop is exactly what you're missing. But what do you actually need? Well, first up is tubing. It's not gonna work very well without that. Pretty much any kind of tubing will work. 3 8 inch and 1 half inch inner diameter tubing are the most common, but don't go to the local Home Depot and buy the cheap clear vinyl stuff that's on the shelf. It will kink when you make tight bends in between components and can stiffen and change color over time, which looks grody and can actually make leaks more likely to develop at the fittings. The metal, that is to say if you're smart, adapters between the usually G1 quarter threads on your components and your tubing. Not to mention that PC water cooling tubing has more pizzazz and some even has antimicrobial properties. Though, if you really want your build to pop, hardline tubing is also available in acrylic and the preferred PETG flavors for a super clean and slick look. Just be prepared to spend more money on like tools and stuff and to deal with having to bend and measure your runs super accurately. Oh, and you won't be using standard barbs either because hardline tubing requires its own special type of compression fittings. So that's a lot of guidance about tubing, but what about all the other stuff? The pump moves liquid through the system, and the spec that many newcomers get hung up on is the flow rate. The conventional wisdom suggests you'll want a flow rate of at least one gallon per minute to decrease turbulence in the water. But as you add components to the loop, it's actually the head pressure rating that makes the bigger difference. Bottom line, from my experience, anything but a Lang D5 or some variant thereof is a compromise. On to blocks. These sit on hot components, transferring heat to the cooling fluid. You'll find an incredible variety out there. Some are made of aluminum because it's cheap and easy to work with. Avoid those because mixing incompatible metals in a loop can cause nasty corrosion over time, even with anti-corrosion additives. And most quality components are made of copper, thanks to its better conductive properties. Which doesn't necessarily mean though that you're stuck with that copper color. Nickel, silver, and gold plating have all been done with mostly good results, and they look great through a see-through plexi top so you can gawk at your coolant flowing through the block. Now, though you can get water blocks for hard drives, SSDs, RAM, and your motherboard, someone actually made a power supply block at one point, if I recall correctly, these are really only for show or for an extremely silent build where there will be next to no airflow to cool those components otherwise. The main heavy lifters are the CPU and the GPU blocks. For the CPU, honestly, it's pretty straightforward these days. A socket compatible option from any of these companies will pretty much do the trick. But video cards are a little tougher. Don't just buy a GTX 1080 block expecting it to work on every 1080 that's out there. The vast majority of video card blocks these days cover the GPU, the surrounding RAM, and even the VRM, whose layout can differ dramatically from one manufacturer to the next. Reference or Founders Edition cards are typically the easiest to find blocks for, but there are some exceptions. The reservoir is the fill point of the system, and it also holds extra fluid to combat natural evaporation over time. Reservoir options are sometimes an aesthetic choice. Five and a quarter inch bay reservoirs used to be in vogue, but tube reses are very popular these days, and other times a purely practical decision. Swiftex MC Res Micro doesn't look like anything special, but was about the only thing that would fit in some of the systems that I've built. Just make sure you put it immediately before the pump in the loop, and don't try to use a tiny reservoir with a super strong pump that stirs up air and puts it back into the loop, making it noisy, if you don't feel like playing labyrinth with your computer to get air bubbles out of your blocks. Finally, the radiator or radiators. These, along with some attached fans, transfer the heat from the fluid to the surrounding air. The larger the better, 
Though, you'll want to make sure that you mount static pressure optimized fans that can move air efficiently through the tight cooling fins. And you can learn more about static pressure fans in this video. This is especially important if you're getting radiators with high fin density, so 20 or more fins per inch. More fins means greater cooling potential, but it also means more turbulence and that you'll need a fan that can force enough air through them, so more noise. You can learn more about radiators here. Which leads us then to the bottom line. Is any of this really worth it? Well, CPU performance isn't likely to change much, but GPUs can drop in excess of 20 degrees and a custom loop is a more elegant way of adding multiple components to a water cooling system than multiple closed loop coolers. Though most people do it more for looks or for silence these days. Speaking of for looks, Squarespace is about more than just looks. They have a wide variety of templates that'll allow you to build your ideal website easily and beautifully. They offer 24 seven support via live chat and email. It starts at only eight bucks a month and you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. All of their templates feature responsive design so your website will scale to look great on any device Every website comes with a free online store and they've got all kinds of other great features like their logo creator, the ability to customize the page if you do happen to know a little bit of coding, though it's not necessary, even I'm able to edit our Squarespace page. And if you're one of those web 2.0 companies that thinks the only website you need is a single page, then their cover pages feature will allow you to have a beautiful one page online presence in minutes. So you can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today by using the link below at squarespace.com. Just make sure you use offer code TECHQUICKIE to get 10% off. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want to check out our other channels, boom. If you want to comment with video suggestions, boom. If you want to subscribe and follow, cool.